Uh, let's uh, to carry on with the discussions of the, the woke that is afflicting uh, this country. Uh, so the discovery that uh, Parliament has paid £800,000 of your and my hard-earned taxpayers' money, uh, giving MPs lessons on woke language and history by consultants who've declared the words lady and pensioner to be offensive. Parliament's paid a challenge consultancy £7,000 to design a course on unconscious bias for MPs. In total, the company, which has also trained BBC staff, has raked in nearly eight hundred grand from Parliament's at one MP called it an absurd waste of taxpayers' money. I'd probably use stronger language than that if I wasn't on air. Let's talk to Calvin Robinson about this. He's a campaign champion uh, at Defund the BBC and joins us now. Good morning to you, Calvin. Good morning, Julia. Um, How are lovely, you today? Very well. Lovely to speak to you. Now, we spoke to you before about these attempts to sort of um, take race out of the classroom after that Channel 4 uh, documentary uh, charting yeah. uh, children at school and, and being taught how not to be racist. Of course, the assumption there being that the children would be racist unless they had these lessons. There's a lot of talk about unconscious bias uh, at the moment. And that even the people who say, you know, but I'm not racist or I'm not sexist or I'm not whatever it is. Um, mm. Well, the act of almost saying that means, well, you probably are because you're unconsciously expressing and feeling all of those things. Um, tell us what unconscious bias training actually is. Well, it's quite quite crafty, isn't it, really? Because, like you say, by default, you are a racist and it's you're unconscious. You can't control how you feel in your unconscious. But this unconscious bias training has been debunked. It's been around since the early 1990s. There's been a lot of research into it. And companies have found that actually you can't predict people's behavior based on their unconscious biases, even if they have a bias. I'm not even admitting that that's a thing. I don't think unconscious bias is a thing. But if it was, you can't predict people's behavior based on it. Yeah. And we've got a whole industry now that are set up to basically be, you know, snake hole salesmen selling this message that actually will help you get over your unconscious bias, will help you be less racist. And again, they're saying that by default, you are, as a white person, you are racist. Yes. As a BME, you are oppressed, you're a victim, and we're the people that can help fix that. And actually, it's they're the ones causing the division. They're the ones stoking up racial well, tensions. Well, this is it. I mean, so while I'm sitting here thinking that I judge people based on their character, you know, Martin Luther King style, you know, what people say, Absolutely. what people do, as opposed to the pigmentation in their skin, um, I am, you are yourself a black man. I am unconsciously right now thinking racist thoughts about you is, is the premise there. Unless I can be made aware of those unconscious thoughts, made conscious, and then I can tackle them. So that, that's the premise. That is it. And like you said, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would say, judge people on their character, not on the colour of their skin. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to be colour blind, not treat people based on the way they look. And we're seeing this all the way through the civil service now. I looked at recently at the jobs on the civil service website. Before they talk about competency, before they talk about meritocracy or what skills or talents they need, they talk about identity and skin colour and yeah. all of this nonsense that doesn't affect the way you do your job. Uh, you know, this company, Challenger Consultancy, founded in 1985, I think they're still stuck in 1985, but they've lectured most of our MPs, they've lectured most people who work in Whitehall, Scottish Parliament, and these are the ones telling people, you know, you can't use words like lady and girl and pensioner, which, you know, we've seen they're erasing womanhood, essentially, aren't they? That girl and lady are now offensive terms. That's really strange to say. Uh, you know, ladies was, are polite and or formal way. Yeah, I, I have to woman. say, I always thought my... I mean, I'm grown up as a feminist, and you know, people say to me, oh, lady, I can't know. I'm no lady. But as a joke, I taught my daughter to refer to men and ladies because when she was saying, you know, that woman, I thought, I thought lady sounded politer. And again, it's the idea that that's in some way an offensive term or a derogatory term I find quite strange. Um, but the interesting thing about this unconscious bias training, as you say, it was developed many years ago, but the people who came up with this, and it's basically a series of questionnaire questions, isn't it? You're asking people people questions uh, to sort of get the drag this bias out of them even yeah. a couple of the people involved in that have said look it doesn't work how people think it works and they they accept that it's been debunked but also uh, it, it can't be scientific in any way because apparently you will get different answers from different from people you know the same person on different days even if they're not trying to cheat the test and therefore it, it it's not able to predict anything useful at all anyway not at all. Yeah, you're right. It comes from this implicit association test, which is completely debunked and it can't predict your behavior whatsoever. But it's all steeped in this this social Marxism of 
white privilege. That's what it always comes down to, critical race theory, that white people are um, in a privileged position and everyone else is unprivileged or disadvantaged. And we know that's not true. You can't judge people's privilege based on the color of their skin, if privilege even is a thing. Yeah. You know, we all have advantages in, in different situations in life and acknowledging them is not a bad thing, but we can't just assume that people are getting where they are because they're white or not getting somewhere because they're black. Yes. We have to take skin out of it completely absolutely and again i mean privilege an awful lot of privilege i would say is you know growing up in a in a happy family with you know with with two parents who care for you um you know and then of course then you're into sort of the class issues of you know what sort of mm-hmm. jobs your parents have got whether there's money whether you're being fed properly you can you know be able to you know go to a decent school those things are far more relevant to whether someone has a, a has you know, inverted commas privilege or not than than whether they're white or black or whatever um do you think that, I mean, I, I can't believe that most MPs in Parliament think this is sensible. Do you think there is an issue about actually people don't want to speak up and say, no, I refuse to do this? And we've had this with men at university campuses being forced to go on these uh, courses, basically to teach them not to rape. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think that most men need to be taught not to rape. They don't do it. The mo- most men don't rape ever in their lives. Um, th- th- there is this assumption of sort of badness that we've got about yeah. people's sort of moral, about their souls, which which is really very uncomfortable. It's guilty until proven innocent, isn't it? And they flip that around very cleverly because who wants to go up against the anti-racists? Because by default, that makes you a racist. And that's why they frame it in that way. You know, we've got around 650 members of parliament at the moment. Only three of them have spoken up. You know, Sir Ian Duncan Smith, Neil O'Brien and Ben Bradley MP are the only ones who have spoken out against this so far. All of the others are going through with it. And yep. that's the sad thing. We need, we need more people yep. standing up for common sense against all of this work nonsense. Absolutely. Well, you're talking a lot of common sense. Calvin Robinson, campaign champion at Defund the BBC. But I know you talked about this unconscious bias training many times before. Thank you so much for joining us.